Hey, hey, what's up, gardening friends? Jeff here, how's everybody doing? Hope you're doing well. I'm great, it's a beautiful, overcasty day, which makes for good filming. The heat's moved out, things have cooled off, and it's time for the August garden tour, which is obvious. I don't know why I have to build up to it. It's in the title of the video. We all know what's going on here. I guess garden tour that probably won't be coming out till September 1st, but you get it. It's what's been going on here over the last few weeks. Check on some progress, see what's been going on. So this pot got blown over again and it's glued back together. So that's good. I'm not going to put the queen palm back in it though. I think that that's just, it's a bad idea. Why keep pushing it, right? I have a different plan for these containers next year with things that are gonna be smaller and more manageable and probably largely perennial with lots of little annual accents. Going around the edges, like with this one here at the Supertunia Vista Bubblegum, that has done fairly well considering the light exposure that's over here. It's gotten kind of wild though, and I don't know if it's grown wild or if it's like been caught in the begonia as the begonia has been growing. But this year I've had to continually come in here, pull them and reorganize them to get them to go down the sides of the pots. They've been, see them? I and mean, look at that, they're all up in here. It's not supposed to be up here. It's supposed to be down there. It's fine though, because the dragon wings, I uh, yeah, I like them. They're one of my favorite begonias. They grow fast. They have a fun shape to them. I like the cascading habit to them. The hummingbirds seem to enjoy them, not as much as they enjoy some other things, but it helps draw them in. And they're easy to grow. But these containers with these queen palms, this one and then that other one, there just isn't a lot of space for roots. And the Super Tunia Vista bubblegum, they don't care. That's a sturdy plant as long as it's got the drip and gets fertilized, it's cool. And if it were in a normal situation, you could even, I mean, you can kind of skip the fertilizing, they'll grow really well. Not as well as they do with fertilizer though. But the begonias, they don't seem to be okay with not having all that root space to be able to spread out. But what I'm saying is the pots are congested with the roots from the palm. So it's kind of like they're in small pots inside of a pot. Get what I'm saying? It's not quite that extreme, but when they're planted up in something of their own or a container with more loose mix and more space for the roots to grow, they tend to get bigger and more showy. And also, don't these look kind of red? I know that the dragon wing pink is still on the reddish side, but I feel like these are more red than any pink dragon wing begonia I've ever planted. I should look around at my other pink ones and make a comparison. I'll try and do that. Doesn't matter, they're still pretty. I'm still happy with them. They look fine. The queen palms have been doing well despite many storms blowing through here and tearing up their fronds. Laurel hedge, looking nice. Oh, I meant to move the gorilla cart. I actually like slightly tidied before this garden tour. Usually I just like start a project, make a mess, and then I'm like, hey, look at my mess. This isn't a huge improvement, but I made a little bit more of an effort there just because things are looking nice right now. I wanna be able to show them off in their glory. The hedge, doing well. It's put on a lot of growth this year. I did forget to come in with its second fertilizing back in July, where I usually go through with holly tone in early spring, and then in July, I come through and scatter some more, or mid-June, somewhere in there, and uh, I didn't do that. But they did get some fresh compost around them, so hopefully that'll be fine. Really, these have been in the ground three years. So at this point, when I fertilize this hedge, it's more just for extra growth, healthier, more sturdy plants but it's not to get them established. They're established at this point. That cold we had last winter, if they survived that being a zone six plant with horrible, horrible cold and snow and ice for a couple of weeks, then I would imagine they're probably here to stay. I shouldn't say that, don't want to jinx it, but so far so good, pretty sturdy. Still waiting for a gap to close up there. That drove me crazy when I planted this hedge up. There was a spot where there's a pipe running through here so I wasn't able to space them quite as evenly as I would have preferred. So instead of having an even kind of swoop that comes through here, it's like an S, it had to be more like a V where they come through like that. And I, just, I don't know, that's not a big deal. It's a hedge, right? As it grows and those leaves all start to touch each other, that's not even gonna be noticeable. So it doesn't matter, but it, I do still see it. I still see it and it still bothers me. <laughs> Pedicets are waning out. They tend to do that this time of year after lots and lots of heat, which we just went through a 10 day heat spell that was pretty brutal. This wasn't terrible. We've had much, much, much worse heat before. It was just in the upper 90s for like 10 days, which is, I mean, that's 
pretty normal for St. Louis to have heat spells like that, but it's usually in July. It just went several days without rain, so I was out here watering as much as I could every morning, but still, these guys, when it gets that hot, they just flop right down and throw a fit. So some of them are bouncing back up. Some of them are just kind of like, all right, we're done for the year and they'll come back next year and look pretty great. I have been worth, this is somewhat intentional, the spot over here. There's a wooden walkway that goes through here that isn't even acceptable, acceptable. It's not even accessible because the pedicets, these are Butterburrs, Pedicets Japonicus. That's always a good ask. That's what those are. Can't even get through there because they've grown so much. So I've been going through and pulling them slowly. I have to do it when the puppy's not outside because if he sees me pulling plants, he'll think it's okay for him to be destructive with plants. And he's usually outside with me because that dog consumes the majority of my life. Not complaining, much worse things that could happen than to be surrounded by a puppy all the time, be training a puppy. Also, for people who are new here, I'm in zone 6B, 6A, right on the line in St. Louis, Missouri. All of the large tropicals, those Alexander Palms, the Queen Palms, the Washingtonia, those all go into a winter storage here. They don't stay outside. People always get confused and have to point it out. Most of the tropicals are in pots out here and the ones that are in the ground, I think for the most part, as I'm looking around, I, yeah, I think everything that's in the ground stays in the ground with the exception of the croton, which we'll look at here in just a few minutes. The strawberry vanilla hydrangeas, they did fantastic this year. They look amazing, except one thing. This one's growth was just too much for it to handle. I have it on a stake. I keep having to tie it up and twist it up to, to keep it from hanging over and drooping the way that it is. So I think what happened here is I more than likely pruned this back too far. If the panicle hydrangea is really only supposed to prune off about a third from the top of the plant. And this one right here specifically, only had a few lead branches coming off of that trunk where it's been standardized. So I went pretty heavy with the cut to encourage more branching. But the downside to that is that, well, and now it's doing this. <laughs> the strawberry vanilla tends to flop no matter what. It's an older variety. It's not one of the ones that's been improved to have a more sturdy, upright habit to it. These flower heads are gigantic. I mean, these are absolutely massive. So that's a lot of weight on the plant. Not surprising that they're going to hang down. They always hang down a little bit, but this is a new extreme. I don't hate it. I think it's pretty. The only way to really go about fixing this would probably be to prune the flowers off prematurely. I'll normally leave these flower heads on throughout the winter time. Typically these would get their cut back in early spring, late winter really, whenever they start to bud out, right? When buds start to show, that's when they get their cut. But with them being dangly like this, that arching, that's going on up here in those branches. I think that it would probably be smart. And let me know what you think about this, comment down below. But I think the best thing to do would be to give this a good prune, I would say early fall, just to get the weight off of these branches so that next year, or I guess I should say late winter, when this gets its prune, its rejuvenation prune, it's not going to be growing out of branches that are all hardened off and hanging down. That's really what needs to be avoided here is we don't want these branches to stay slopey and angled like this. And the weight of these is going to continue on like that. So I may need to come through and cut them right around here so that they can stand back up and not be pulling on the plant. They can stand back up and have a, just a nicer looking growth more towards the center of the plant. And then next year, this shouldn't be as big of an issue. You can do a much smaller prune, a more controlled prune, and there are plenty of branches going on on the inside that it will look nice, but not like this. This is too much. I think they're beautiful, but it's really hard to get around here. Not much of a walkway, and that's not safe either, but they're pretty. They have beautiful coloration. They start off white, then they age to a pink, and they stay that beautiful green at the end, and then slowly that pink will move up to the very, very tip. But I like having that lighter color combo in there, having the shades of white, the green, and cream basically is what's in there. Because they really pop at nighttime and just look absolutely beautiful when the lights are on out here and the pool lights are on and the water just kind of ripples and reflects across those white flower heads. One of my favorite things to see out here at nighttime. I don't have a lot of white flowers, but I like to plant a few for that effect at nighttime. And there's something kind of refreshing about them. Lots of flowers back there on the maculata. That maculata's gotten huge. I need to repot that very badly and I can see the squirrels 
knocking over the other begonias and there's some other things that need to be what it's you know it's always a work in progress it's fine don't worry about it there's a succulent seashell that got planted up a couple months ago where i just basically took excess succulents and stuck them in a seashell pot not a ton of growth out of there. They're not getting a ton of sun over here. It's a fairly shaded spot, which I find necessary with a lot of succulents because this pavement is so hot when the sun is out. There are some plants that got scorched last week. It was just too much for them. We'll talk about those in a minute. Over here, look at those impatiens. Those have filled out wonderfully. I cannot believe how well, well, I can, they're impatiens. Impatiens tend to just do really well. But typically with impatiens right around July, maybe late July, I usually have to cut them back about 50% because they'll get really tall, leggy and lanky and start to just flop over and look nasty. A common thing to do with annuals, right? But these didn't get planted until late June. You know, May was just a toss. It's cold, rainy, wasn't a good time to get them in the ground. And so around late June, I put these in the ground and this is what they've done since then. No fertilizer, anything like that. I think I used some compost and maybe some slow release when I planted them, but uh, none of the like starter fertilizers or anything like that. I talked about that when I planted them, but I hadn't told anybody I was getting a dog yet because I wasn't totally sure uh, what was going to happen if things were going to fall through properly. But I avoided using like the biotone starters and those things in the garden this year because of the puppy. Anytime I use those in the ground, the dog is just jump right in. They start sniffing and digging, smelling things and tearing things up. So considering I didn't do anything like that, I think these look great. The Wawirana type and patients tend to be pretty vigorous. This is about what to expect from them. I was on the fence as to whether or not to go ahead and give them their prone. I thought about doing it about a week ago. They were looking sad. But with the upcoming heat I saw in that forecast, I decided to not give them the prune. I don't think it would have been good for them and they're fine. These only have about a month to maybe six weeks left of growing on them. So it just, I don't know. It seems unnecessary to do the prune. If I do it, it will be by a third and not by half. I'll keep an eye on them over the next week. If they start to look long leggy and just kind of blech, then give them a prune. It's easy to do. The crepe myrtle that I said I was gonna cut down. Here it is. This is a Natchez crepe myrtle. Classic variety, white flowers, pretty cold hardy. The last several winters here though, this entire plant has died down to the ground. Hasn't been able to hold on to its wood throughout the winter time, which isn't terribly uncommon in zone six with crepe myrtles. Maybe this winter will be more mild and it'll hold on to the wood and be even bigger next year. I don't know. At one time, this was like 12 feet tall and absolutely beautiful until there was a nice storm and that just cut it down. I should probably get in here and prune this stuff out that's in the way of the impatience. That would look a lot better. It's the nice thing about the garden tours. Sometimes to see things when I'm going through and talking to the camera that I just don't really notice when it's just me flying solo, walking around, trying to keep the dog from jumping into the garden beds and those things. Things will stand out through the lens sometimes. It's more like you're looking at a picture and then you can go, oh, well, that needs to be improved. So grabbing some clippers and clearing that out, that'll make that look nicer and open it back up and allow some more airflow back in there to those impatients too. They'd probably appreciate that. We've had lots of beautiful foliage popping out here on the Alocasia Alcaniwa Silver. Love this plant. I have had this for such a long time and I know I should repot it because it's been in this pot for like three or four years, but it's been doing so well that I just, I don't know. I don't, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. That's been my mentality with this plant. I do top dress it with some compost, organic type fertilizers and make sure that that gets blended in so that the roots stay nice and healthy and the soil doesn't get too barren. Potting soil gets barren very, very, very quickly from all the flushing and the water circulation, the way it just moves right through those pots. Those mixes don't stay rich for anywhere near as long as what you would find in the ground when you've been amending the soil. This is probably one of my favorite leaves this plant has ever popped out, which is odd because it doesn't have a lot of white in it. You would think it'd be something more like this right here. Oh, uh, well, that's really pretty. You know, I don't have to choose. Can like them all. Nothing wrong with that. <laughs> I'm also seeing here that I need to come in and prune back the impatience because there's a perennial begonia in here that was planted, I don't know, a couple months ago. It was in one of the plant halls. It's a smooch, I believe. I'm not positive. Oh, so that's why I saved the tags. Pink teardrops. It's a beautiful plant. I would think it would appreciate having things opened up over here more. I don't want anything to rot on the plant because it's getting a nice spread to it. This will come up even further. And actually it's gonna look very similar to a dragon's wing begonia. It'll have a fun cascade shape to it. That's gonna come up and arch forward just a little bit over this drainage path here. 
and this lava rock and those flowers. Aren't they cute? It's like they have a tiny little yellow button nose on them. Might help if you could actually see it. Apparently it's not very camera friendly. They look overexposed. The outer petal, the outside of the outer petal that is, is pink. You might be able to see it better up here, let's see. It's a light pink, it's a blush color with a nice calyx around it that also looks neat. And then they're white on the inside with the fun yellow pollen filled center. I'm happy with the growth that I've gotten out of that because that's a perennial. You know, we really, I like to focus the majority of my energy on my perennials. I plant lots of annuals, but I tend to plant them and then move on. When it comes to upkeep and making sure that things are staying pruned and fertilized properly, I focus more on the perennials. I also don't grow a lot of annuals that need a lot of upkeep. And patients, they don't need much. The Vista petunias, they don't need much. And coleus, they tend to be fine. Those are plants that just need a prune here and there. And I'm, I guess I do fertilize every week, but that's it's just habit. That's not a big deal. This Monstera is growing like insanity. I've had to move it up here, which doesn't look that pretty, but it has so much growth coming out of it. It was starting to come all over the patio, which I thought looked amazing, but the puppy, he noticed it one day and just went, chomp, took a bite right out of it. So I went ahead and bumped it up here. That's just where it's gonna have to hang out for now. It seems perfectly happy in this spot though. The drip hits it, so it gets a nice mist, but not a heavy soak. And it's, it's growing. It's growing really, really well. And pretty leaves. You ever have those things where you just feel like if you don't go ahead and just do it, it's going to drive you nuts? That's how I'm feeling with this crepe myrtle right now. There, that looks much better. You can even see there's a distinct line in here where there was a branch that was shading things. That'll be able to open up more. I put a whole bunch of caladiums behind all of this. But what I didn't do was pay attention to how tall they get. I put the lemon blush, which is this one right here, which is a shorter variety. I think the other one was flatter me, maybe might be one that's back here. I don't know, I can kind of see a hint of it sort of sticking up over there. The impatience, when those die back, I'm, I'll go ahead and lift those caladiums and plan smarter next year. That, that didn't work out very well. I also went and pruned back some of those impatience. Get that spot opened up for that begonia figure since I'm over here and have the clippers. May as well. All right, need to be careful. This is going to turn to a vlog. That's not what's supposed to be happening here. The Washingtonia, it's done a lot of growing. <laughs> Hard to get the camera up there. Oh, it's hard while the tripod's in my hands. It's Washingtonias, they grow really fast, but it's put on a ton of growth. Hopefully it will fit in the greenhouse. I don't, I don't know, I leave that up to the people who store it, but the roof is only so big in there. Fingers crossed, they'll be able to take it. The heliconias are all doing really well over here. They've been throwing up flowers all over the place. They're kind of at a little bit of a lull right now. They tend to do that. They'll put up a whole bunch and then it'll calm down and reset and new growth comes up and they'll put up some more from that point on. The Italian ice or oh so easy Italian ice roses that are back here are just finished flowering. They had a whole bunch of flowers on them and now they're not. That's one thing with garden tours. There are always these points where I'm like, oh, I should do the tour now, but it'll be like the middle of the month. So in the future, I need to remember to just get shots of things when they look pretty. You know, with gardening, it's not normal for everything to look at its prime all at the same time. We don't want them to either, right? We want there to be a cycle of progression where some plants will flush out and look really nice while others are having a rest and be able to have that secession. Anyways, alocasias looking good. This one right here, that's the volunteer alocasia, also looking nice. Banana canna is starting to put some flowers up. They're a little bit short for that, but that's all right. They're looking healthy. No idea where this came from. Not a clue. Looks like an alocasia, so it must just be a piece of root that broke off from another one. I didn't put that there. Still seeing maple tree seedlings over here. I'm constantly pulling up those maple tree seedlings. There's a little piece. Can't see it very well, but right here, that's a piece of heliconia. Look how far away that is from the other plant. Really far away from the other plant. They will spread and fill in an area quite nicely. This far north, the heat, the warm part of the season is short, so won't get a ton of that. But if you live someplace where you have a really long, warm growing season, those will fill in and look very nice. It's like the bananas. They're always looking good. There's not much to say about them. They're growing, they're being bananas, just get bigger every single time I look at them. They're starting to go into their 
late morning, early afternoon lull where the leaves droop down, but that's normal. That's what they do. Same thing with the bikini teeny colocasias. They're looking fantastic, spreading all over the place. I even have to come out here and pull them off the ground. The runners start to creep across the ground over here. You might be able to see some of them down here. There, these. See that? They put these up all over the place. That's always a point I make with these. This is an elephant ear. You only want to put some place that you want to fill in because they just, they grow like insanity. I find them popping up all over the place. They're all over the garden beds over here. I didn't plant those there. But there they are. The ginger corner. This was all planted up, I don't remember, May ish between May and June did a lot of planting over here. Sable miners, the scrub palms, one here, one here, two over there. Those all got planted up last year and they have flushed out with lots and lots and lots of new growth. They seem quite happy as do the gingers. Don't those just look beautiful there? This is what I was hoping for with this space. I don't, I need to do some pruning on that rolia that's hanging over there, but I'll get to it. It still looks nice, but what I wanted was to have all these beautiful orange spikes coming up from the Hidichium Flaming Torch, the butterfly ginger. And then there's the banana cannas with that reddish contrast right behind them and the passion vine grown up the side of the window and you can see the little wispy leaves when looking through and then the tips of the heliconias. There was a nice hint of purple <laughs> from the rolia, but some storms knocked that down and I never staked it back up and I don't know if I'm going to honestly because the sun that's over here is not as good as it was initially. As the season progresses, the sun gets lower in the sky and all the trees over here make it so that there's not anywhere near as much light back here as there is between, well, January and July, mid-July, somewhere in there. Things start to get more shaded. There's a better shot of the flower there on that Hidichium flaming torch. It's a really pretty, kind of a light, almost a creamy orange apricot with a darker center on them. They're not a highly fragrant Hidichium, but they are very prolific. Have them here, over here, and then the one that's over there to the side. Those were all just single rhizome chunks that were put in the ground last year, and this is everything they've done this year. And every year that's just gonna get bigger and bigger and bigger. I'll sh you'll see my big one that I took the divisions from here in just a moment. But what's nice when these clumps get to be more established is you have different growth sizes. Like I was talking about with the Heliconias. So the Heliconias, they have the stalks that are in bloom and then as those start to fizzle out they're putting up new ones that will start to bloom so you get a secession normally but there's not going to be much of that in this space for probably a few years each clump needs to put on more growth before they'll have that secession but it's still slightly there you can see this flower head up there that one finished flowering about a week ago and then those two right there are going to open up and carry through but it's been nice i enjoy the view through this window that was a big part of why i planted this area with a lot of color and texture was because I like standing there, being at the counter and doing things in the kitchen, looking outside and seeing the trunk of the palm with all the different colors. The hummingbirds are all over the place over here and it'll be even more so when those cannas start to bloom. And the passion vine. Have all the color and contrast back there with the Persian shield. All of the lemon coral seed, I can't even see it. Start to fill in that pot very nicely, nice and wide. I am happy with how well it held its color. Oftentimes when they don't get as much light, they'll be more into the greenish instead of this yellowy lime green color. But I wanted them to have that contrast. I was thinking that with the shade from the palm tree up above it and just the shifting of the sun that those would darken up, but they still look pretty good. They'll look even better when I either stake up or cut the rulia back. I think I'm going to stake it up though because those tall purple stems look really nice when I'm looking through this window here and see all the orange around them. I like the orange and the purple together. So I just need to grab some stakes and get that pulled up right. Easy thing to do, it's just one of those things where you just forget about it all the time, just keep forgetting to do it. The plumeria, shockingly, has a set of buds coming out of the center. Don't know why, truth be told, didn't do much with the plumeria this year. Haven't fertilized it, nothing. It's not even on drip. It just gets hit by the sprinklers from where it's sitting here in the garden. This plumeria I got in clearance a few years ago. It was a replacement to a plumeria that I'd had, a, gosh, I think I was a teenager. I got one off eBay. Someone was just sent like an entire branch. One that's nearly the same size as this plant right here, but just one branch, like 30 bucks. In the winter, they lose their foliage and my dad, thought that it was dead and he threw it away. <laughs> I've wanted to get a new plumeria ever since, but I've never been satisfied with just getting the little sticks. I wanted a big size plant. So when I saw this at the nursery, I got it without even caring what the flowers looked like. I was just like, oh, they'll be pretty. 
No, this plumeria does not have pretty flowers. <laughs> They're just a dark red flower. I mean, it looks nice, but as far as plumerias are concerned, it's not for me. But the plant itself looks cool. They have a nice shape to them. The leaves are a fun texture. So easy to grow and overwinter that I'll hold on to it until it gets to be a thorn in my side size wise, and then I'll give it away. Because if I'm not that nuts about the flowers, then I just, why bother, right? But right now, it's still small, it's still cute. It was initially tucked back here into the garden, and I had to pull it out. I don't remember, oh, because I had to retrench a bunch of the plumbing, and it, well, it just, I never put it back. It's been doing well here, so it's just, it's fine. It can stay there. Whatever, not a big deal. The pumpkins. So in my last video, the last vlog, I came out and I harvested three pumpkins on here. The puppy also harvested one that uh, was not ready to be harvested. And I've been talking about, I think in every single garden tour, how I was going to get rid of them. But then I was like, eh, but just watch, wait till the next garden tour, they'll still be there. So here we are, and it's time to get rid of them. I'm going to do that here in a day or two. There's still one pumpkin in here that's still coloring up down on the inside. And when that's done, when it turns all orange, I'm gonna go ahead and pull them up. They're in the way. And after the heat spell that we had, they look terrible. They got cooked and fried. This pavement gets really, really hot when the sun's on it, as pavement does. No surprise there, but you know, they're not meant to be. Just grown on the pavement. I'm looking forward to getting, and put some long gloves on and get those out of here and be able to get to the edge of the patio again and get up into the garden bed because there are things I need to do in there and the pumpkin vines are in the way. Like this weed, that's only there because the pumpkin vine's in the way. No, that's not true. I just, I've been a bad gardener, didn't pay attention. Okay, that's, but now I missed a piece. No, I was really referring more to little things like being able to get in, pull weeds that are further back in there. And you can see there's some colocasias here, some more of those bikini teenies that are <laughs> running through the plants. And I didn't plant those there, so I'd rather they not be there because I don't want them to fill in this space. You saw it just a moment ago, what those do down there. I don't want them to do that over here. Should also thin out these sun impatience, probably. I'm not getting the same kind of growth out of them this year as in years past. And I just assume that that's because the trees keep getting bigger. So they're not getting as much sun, which is okay. That's not the end of the world. Sun impatience don't have to go full sun. They can take part sun. They can even take part shade. They just won't flower as much. I still think they look nice, just kind of bumpy and uneven, but. It's all right. Still lots of color, still looks good. I'm glad that I went with the compact variety. I used to always use the landscape type. With Sun Impatience, usually what you find are just the compact variety. That's what the nurseries usually sell. But if you get online, normally can find the landscape size, which get even bigger. I think they'll get 30 inches or so high and wide, whereas these are gonna be looking more 18 to 24 inches. I think that that would have been too much. Would have been beautiful, but I don't think there's enough light here for all that. Hi, butterfly. Okay, bye, butterfly. And then patients are just great, aren't they? They're more sturdy than the regular ones. They can take more sun and they can usually take more cold. They're not cold hardy, but normally the cold will kill back just the regular standard impatience in my garden weeks before they'll kill back the sun and patience. It seems to take a fairly hard freeze to knock them down all the way, which I appreciate. That's very nice. The lantana that I said I was gonna pull up, I didn't, the puppy's not interested. He's never shown any interest. Maybe it helps having the pumpkin vine there. I'm not sure. Oh, the sun popped up out of nowhere. This is the mother ginger plant to all of those gingers I was showing before just around the corner. This is what the divisions were taken from. This is the mother ginger plant that those babies were taken from, all those offshoots. The thing that's different with this plant this year is that it shot out the majority of its growth all at one time. So that secession that I was talking about that I'm used to, I'm going to get some of it. Hi, hummingbird, come back, come back. All right, bye. Usually this plant will be in flower from, I don't know, early August, somewhere in there, continuing out all the way until October but this went into bloom right when that heat hit. So I'm not thinking it's going to give quite as much of a show this year. It put on a beautiful show this past week when it was really, really hot outside and looked stunning and it still looks nice, but it's going to fizzle faster and I'm not seeing a ton of smaller growth that's coming up. There's still maybe one, two, three, maybe four more growths that are coming up in there that will put up some new spikes. 
so that's good. I've been on top of the fertilizing over the last few weeks. I'm going to come in with some compost and just enrich that. that way if any growth is down in there, down low, then that can go ahead and push on up and uh, keep flowering. Just realized I have a spider web stuck to me. Excellent ginger, talk about it all the time. It looks beautiful from out here, from inside the house. I love looking out the windows and seeing it. One of my favorite plants in the whole garden, I just cut it back in the winter time, leave like maybe a nub just to remember where it is and I throw a bag of mulch on top of it and that's it. Sometimes two bags of mulch. Comes back just fine. After last winter, I don't think this plant's going anywhere if it survived that kind of cold. Okay, camera's gonna overheat. The sun's been out for what? A minute? We're already overheating? What a wimp. There we go. That's better. Golly, and got some more clouds in the sky, so hopefully won't overheat again. And you get the point. This bed's been doing well. I think it would do better if I can get the pumpkins out of there and have better access to the plants, though, to take care of them better. This rolia right here, this is the Macho Morado from, or Macho Morado from Proven Winners. I don't think there's enough sun. There was enough sun to get it going, but then it started to flop forward as the light changed. It still looks really pretty, though. I love the purple flowers on it. It's been an effortless plant to grow, but just the form hasn't been all that great. It do also doesn't help that the puppy's favorite spot to run and hide from me is right in this corner, so he, he'll grab a coconut and just dive right in there. He likes to lay in the plants. He likes to make himself a bed inside the plants. As long as he's not chewing on them, then that's okay for right now. I'm slowly teaching him to stay out of the garden beds. He has the one spot right here that's allowed, and then there's another spot that, oh, you can see it from here. Right there, it's just a sea of creeping Jenny. He likes to lay over there too, on a nice bed of green. It's really cute. The croton's looking great. And growing, flowering, putting out little seeds here and there. I did have somebody ask me to get them a close-up of the flowers on here, and I wasn't able to because they don't last very long. Yeah. It's pretty much done. I don't think there are any still on here. They're not super significant. It's just a little stick that comes out of the plant with lots of little tiny white flowers on them. Yeah. So it's not that little. That comes out fairly far, but for the most part, it's not that much to look at. It's all about the foliage with these plants. It's a cool looking flower though, but you can't see it from far away. You get what I'm saying. This hanging basket up here, I know it doesn't look great, but how is it still alive? The pansies in here are still growing and flowering throughout some pretty intense and insane heat. I did not expect them to keep going. They don't look fantastic, but they're still going. I think I'm just going to leave it. I will run a new drip up here because I pointed out in last week's vlog that I noticed that the drip is slightly off center and it's not really getting even coverage in here. I'd use a very light airy mix in this basket because it's quite heavy. When I originally planted it, it bent the S hook that it was on, fell down, and. I had to replant it, so I lifted the level up with some packing peanuts and used a light blend that doesn't weigh as much. But because of that, I need to get in here and make sure that there's better coverage with that drip. I'm gonna pull some of the plants out and replace them with fall and winter plants, like some cabbage, and I guess I'll leave the pansies, because they're in there and they're doing okay in the lobularia. It doesn't look amazing, but it will when it gets better drip on it. I'll add some earthworm castings in there and that'll start to look a lot more nice and tidy and colorful. Not a ton to report over here other than the heat did some damage to those dahlias and this beautiful sun and patient. I watered as much as I could. I was out here every morning just watering and watering and watering and they're all on drip too. But it just wasn't enough. On one of the hottest days out here, this impatient just flopped right over. It is slowly starting to pull itself back up. This was a very clear divide like this just a few days ago. I was thinking I was going to have to cut it back and maybe stake it up, but you know, give it a few more days, see if that lifts back up. This is the uh, Sun and Patient Tropical Rose, variegated with pretty pink flowers on it. It does have lots of scorch on it from that heat, but that's just the way things go with that dark pavement and lots of sun. Not a big deal. We're moving into some cooler weather here. September's generally more cool and mild and this will start to look even better. Even though they like the heat, same thing with the Persian Shield that's in there and the Bird of Paradise back there. They're all heat lovers, but I think that they will be happy to have a reprieve because some of the heat that we've had was just, is a little bit too much. The Bird of Paradise, been very happy over here, been throwing out leaves all over the place. Can even see where the trunk is starting, not the trunk, but the center of the plant has risen quite a bit. It was down here. That's going to be the new center of growth there. Been very happy. There are some Colocasia Maui Golds down in there from last year. 
Puerto and Fredo Casa also back in there. This whole area is all new. So I'm still getting it organized and tidied. The Tiki Bar was here. If you watch, if you haven't watched this last garden tour, this spot's completely different. I need to fold this chair up. I'm gonna keep this chair folded in back there in that corner. I think I found a hose reel that I like, so the hose will be off the patio here fairly soon. But this just, it's not as pretty as the Tiki Bar, but it's much more practical. Had that spot to keep things organized. I'd like to pretty up the top of this. There's still a few things up there that are just there because I haven't figured out what to do with them yet and I'm getting ready to give Toby a bath. That's why that hose is sitting. Nobody cares. It's it's a cabinet. It's not that big of a deal. It's just nice to have the space cleared out. Oh, it looks so much better cleared out. As you may remember, back in April, May, and June, I was talking about how this area was getting redone. There were two tables. There's the broken tiki bar. Those tables are gone. Have a new table that's much more sturdy and accommodating for everybody. And now there's this big open space here. It'll look even better when Turbo Town's gone. That's what I've been calling the playpen area. That's so that the puppy can be out here while I'm doing things and he can still roam or nap, or whatever he wants to do in there. That way I don't have to keep an eye on him all the time while I'm working with the plants. Cause there are plenty of plants in here that are toxic. I, everything that was really, really toxic, I've moved out of here. That was on last weekend's vlog. I made a space for the oleanders. So they're out of reach at this point and the like angel trumpets, those are gone. I moved those too. That wasn't even the point. The space is nice and open. And now that it's open, I want to rearrange the spot here and have it come around and curve more back into there. Probably plop some zinnias into those pots just to color it up. Speaking of color, the hot tub wall. This looks so nice. I love all the color. I moved one of the roses over here that needs to be planted. I just stuck it right there because that way I could run a drip to it where it was sitting. It wasn't able to get to that drip. But through the heat, everything held up just fine. I did have to run the drip longer than I normally would, but that's okay. Junia Vista bubblegum, Heliconia, some Sun Impatience, gorgeous Coleus, the Silver Dragon Colocasia is back there with the Maya Palm right next to him. I think that I need to move this Parwar Palm. I think that's getting too much sun. I talked about that in the last video about how uh, this rose right here was initially right there and I was noticing it was really leggy and just not looking so fantastic and for some reason I had it in my head that this side of the this wall here got more sun than that side but really that's the other way around this side gets more light than that side so I'm doing a little bit of shuffling there the sea hibiscus look at all the growth that this thing has I love this plant it just grows and grows and grows it's very thirsty but that's just the characteristic of the plant. Nothing surprising there. It's on drip, so that's not normally an issue. Usually the drip is enough to suffice and keep it happy, but this is easily doubled in size since I potted it up. And that was just maybe a month and a half ago. I don't know, but every leaf it throws out, it's just stunning. Just like a whole entire different variegated painting pops out. And I'm weird with variegated plants. Some of them I think look beautiful and some of them I'm just not nuts about. This one I like. It's not a variegation that's so loud that it's distracting from everything around it. Like with that Tropical Rose Sun Impatient, there's another one down here. I love it, but I wouldn't want too many because it's just really extreme. Oh, there was some heat damage on this Dracaena here. It's okay, they're sturdy, tough growers. It'll be fine. Not the end of the world. The plant itself is doing well, just like the Freckles Croton. Looking so happy and lush and full. Love that croton, it's my favorite. And just this spot in general, isn't that beautiful? So much color and texture. The hummingbirds love those heliconias. I like how that dracaena pops out from the freckles croton with the hibiscus over there. And it's, I mean, for me, the star. Well, I can't pick a star actually. I was going to say it's the heliconias, but the croton. I just have a whole bunch of my favorite things all in one spot here. I like how they've come together. They look nice, especially with the backdrop with that yellow golden color on the Eureka Palm, which has recovered very nicely, looking good. Throwing out new fronds all over the place. I'm just very much enjoying how things are playing together right here. Good colors, some tidying to be done, but that's okay. It's just part of having a garden. Always some work to be done. And the windmill, pl windmill palm planters on the front porch, I had like three different attempts to say that. I kept saying windmill palm punters and punty palm plant. It's like my tongue, I was just tongue tied. I always forget to update with these. They're doing well. They have the New Guinea impatience in them. The star of the show has to be these canary wing begonias though. They've done lots of growing, a little bit leggy because the spot's not getting as much sun as it was initially, but where they are getting more light, 
They're looking absolutely stunning. I love the color of the foliage on these and the contrast they have with the flowers. Look how those hang down. They're absolutely beautiful. Very, very, very prolific blooms. These have got to go into a hanging basket next year. It looks so much better where they can be viewed from below because standing up here, you can't really see those flowers and how prolific and beautiful they are. It's something that I would like to be able to look up at. <laughs> I wonder if my neighbors are thinking I'm like squatted down in a very awkward, uh, kind of weird, somewhat suggestive looking position. Yeah, I should stand up. The lobularia on the front, not doing much, but I, they're starting to come back around. They just weren't getting a ton of light, I think was the problem. This one over here is doing just fine, and it gets about the same amount of light as the other one, so I don't know. New Guinean patients are doing well. That was the thing when I planted these up. I talked about how New Guinean patients are not an annual that I always do that well with tend to over baby them. I don't usually give them enough sun and then I get kind of weird about the watering with them. I, I don't know why. So I made it a point this year to give them more sun than I had in years prior. And really they could probably use more sun than they're getting right now, but they're alive. I didn't kill them. The windmill palms, <laughs> it's probably what I should have talked about first with the windmill palm planters. They're doing great. Haven't been doing a lot with them. They're in drip. Make sure they get some palm gain every other month. These have been hit with a liquid fertilizer as of mid July. I've been doing that about I would say every other week, should be doing it once a week, but it's the front porch, so I tend to forget. On my front porch, the plants need to be things that I can put on to drip and they'll be okay if I just sort of forget about them. Ah, that begonia, it's so pretty. I love that so much. Got some boots here with some tricolor seed in it. In years past, I tried to be more creative with this pot, but it's, it's really a pain to plant because it pinches in right here at the top, so it's hard to really get something that looks even and cohesive. So I just stuck the sedum in it, and I think that it looks nice. The nice thing about the sedum is this is hardy all the way to zone four, so I don't have to worry about it. It can just stay out here all year. It'll have some dieback on it, but not too terribly much, and just it'll just keep doing its thing. I don't have to run drip to it. There's something quaint and elegant about it. As elegant as maybe could do for something simple that's hanging out inside of a pair of boots. And the foxtail palm. It's been putting up fronds all over the place. It's, oh, you can't really see it from right here. I'm not gonna show it from the other side because, you know, it's the internet. You show the front of your house unless you wanna get robbed. Well, it has a spear unfurling right now and it has another one that's going to pop up. It's probably done one, two, three, four, five spears so far this year, which is fantastic. Love the trunk on it. It's a skinny one. You don't really get those big bulbous white grayish smooth trunks this far north. That's not really something you see because of the lack of water and heat and humidity during the summertime. This is about what they usually look like this far north when you have to move in the house in the wintertime. It seems happy though. I wish it were in the backyard because I love this plant, but, but it seems so happy that, well, it, it can stay here. Pool planters, Whew, they're growing. They are really growing. Colocasia, Maui Golds, doing what they do, getting really big. Didn't know they were going to get this big, so lesson learned. I think they look good there, but they're a lot. It's a lot to have in there. I have to keep them pruned fairly often from down low. You can even see, and it's only been maybe a week since I pruned and all this that's down low, that's all gotta come off because it's shading those petunias, so the petunias aren't getting quite the growth I would like to see on them. They still look really pretty though. I mean, that looks fantastic, doesn't it? It's just a beautiful ball of lime green with some beautiful Heliconia accents in the middle. There's a Hirsuta right here that's got new spikes, new um, bracts popping up all over it. And those will get even bigger, more elongated as the plants grow. They should come up right around here, somewhere in there. It'd be a fun little spiral of pretty red and orange and yellow green flowers. So here's that spot I was talking about from the prior video, the vlog from last weekend. I put some fence paneling up right here and then some more over along here. That was to gate the space off so that the dogs can't get up here and roam around. And that's where I moved the oleanders. Uh, originally these oleanders had been sitting in the driveway and it was just too hot for them in the driveway on that blacktop and the hose didn't quite reach over there either. So this is a better location for them. The sprinkler hits them so they get watered automatically. And this one, within just a few days of coming over this spot, was it had buds on it but it had been holding onto them for a long time. And now that it's getting 
a little bit less light. They can take full sun, but remember they're in pots and it was incredibly hot. So I think it's good for them to have some afternoon shade if they're potted and it's over like 94, 95. Somewhere in there, whatever the case, it was happy with the move. Flushing out with new flowers. <laughs> Doesn't need a prune. It's got some wonky branches on it. This is the, it's Malibu Sunset or Malibu Sunrise. Can't remember which one, but it does have a really lanky growth, but I think it has the prettiest oleander flowers I've ever seen. But uh, it's kind of hard to tell. I don't know how close I can get in on that. They're a really pretty pink to coral with that yellow in the center, and they're more vivid than this in person. When that plant is in its full glory with blooms all over it, it is stunning. I love that oleander. Down below it are all of the Austin Pretty Limits that I got from Proven Winners. I'm gonna repot those very soon. I was going to do it last week, but it was just too hot. Seemed like a bad idea to repot them in that kind of heat. So I'm gonna bump those up a pot size. All of those overwinter inside. They can't take the cold here. Some oleanders can die back to the ground and come back every year, but they only get like 18 to 24 inches tall when you do it that way. And you get like three sticks with some flowers on it. They're so easy to overwinter in a garage that I just figured I'd keep them in there. Get more growth out of them that way in a better show in the springtime. So that's this space, gated off. Dogs can't get to them, so the dogs are safe. That's what that was all about. Also, look at this leaf. Isn't that awesome? Also talked about that in the last video. Colocasia mojito. Love that leaf, all the little splotches on it. I have a love-hate relationship with the mojito variety. Sometimes it looks really pretty. Sometimes they just look dirty. Just dirty and muddy and not always my favorite. Black coral, colocasia right here. And then the Lespedeza, which I forgot to update on in the last garden tour, but it wasn't really doing much anyway, so that doesn't matter. This is a Lespedeza Thumbergii. It's a, I think the variety's called Volcano, maybe. I'm not positive. It's one that sort of trails. It needs to be planted along a hillside or a wall where it can grow over and droop. I put a stake back there to help hold it up, and I think I need to go in and tie it up even more because it's still really, really cascading down that wall, and I would, there's, there are plants back there. It's hard to water them, and they're not getting light with that hanging there. It's just started to flush out with lots and lots of tiny little dainty pink blooms. The pollinators absolutely love this plant. All of these teeny tiny little bitty buds there will open up over the next several weeks. It just puts on a beautiful show of cascading pretty pink flowers. It ends up looking like a shower or a just waterfall of pretty pink flowers. It's always covered in honeybees and butterflies and hummingbirds. Well, not always. I'm standing right here, I don't see any, but you know what I mean. They like it. Okay, what else? Queen palm. Looking good. This thing, oh my gosh, it has grown so much this year. And look at that. It grew a lot last year too. It's, just, it's a very happy queen palm with lots and lots of growth. I pruned, I think, four fronds off of it. I think this one right here could probably go, but it's fine. It can hang out there for now. Bismarckia has some scorch on the tips of the fronds from the heat, but otherwise doing well, putting out some new growth. The stuff that's planted under here is doing okay. This pot got knocked over twice by the wind, so the plants had to reroot themselves twice. It's not, it's not fantastic, but it's all right. It only looks nice. Colorful with the caladiums and the Begonia, yeah, it'll do. Altissima, very happy back there. My Gloriosum, which you can barely see. Really enjoying that spot, though I do need to repot that. I will try and do that this weekend. I have a whole bunch of plants on a list that need to be repotted. That one definitely needs it. It's pushing onto the side of the pot, so it's putting out some smaller foliage. And This is the time, right? Still have maybe a month and a half here, possibly two months of decent weather. So want to utilize that time to get the plant to be able to put its roots out and be happy. Oh, just kicked my tripod, sorry about that. Bamboo, it's just bamboo. It's what bamboo does, bamboo grows a lot. I will say I am very surprised at how, oh, you can't even see it. The Riger begonia, it looked better before the heat came in. But when I initially got this, I was like, don't expect to see this in a month. And here we are two and a half months later, it's still growing. I didn't put it on drip and I just basically potted it and left it alone. I'm a heavy handed water and sometimes with the tuberous begonias, I just overdo it and rot them out. So I figured this was a good spot for it because I don't, it gets hidden a little bit, just a smidge by the begonia above it. And it's not on the drip. So it's up to me to keep it watered. And it only, I only water it like twice a week. It's doing pretty well. Maybe not as well as it should be doing, but it's alive. So that's a win. Another weed. Oh. 
Well, look at that. It's growing right out of my mossy coconut. Isn't this coconut cool? I've had this for years. It was a full on coconut at one point with the husk all the way around it. And Tucker, my old dog, he passed last December. He gnawed this part of it off. And I thought that it looked really neat. And then the moss started to grow on it. And I just left it and I've let it be because look at that. Doesn't it look cool? I think that that's so neat looking. It's its own little like mossy ecosystem there. Anyways, the whole entire fountain area, everything seems happy. Nothing really much to report over here. The plants are growing. They seem to be doing well. The metanilla that's back here is covered in flower buds. They're slowly starting to open up. It did kind of wane in the heat and I was worried about it, but it looks like it's going to be okay. It's tucked fairly far back there in the shade. The Thai constellation Monstera, we had a pretty bad storm and it snapped the rope that I had holding it up to its support. But luckily it's big enough that the wall over there caught it. It wouldn't have been the end of the world if that stem had broken. You know, it's a Monstera. Let's cut it, stick it back in the soil, make sure that it doesn't dry out for too terribly long while it's getting rooted in and it would have been fine this time of year. In the winter, it might've been more of a struggle. It's humid enough out here that that would root no problem, but. I would, you know, just rather it not, right? Don't want it to break. So that got caught right there. I'm going to come back there with some stronger rope and get that retied. And I also have to rework some drip back there. So I will get on that fairly soon. Looks like the Adenitia palms finally done with this frond and get that out of there. It's been a fairly happy palm this year. It's put on a lot of growth and looks much better than it did when it was returned from the greenhouse. This container has caladiums, what is that, radiance? The spring fling, which has really neat foliage. It's, I mean, it's also a little bit like gross and crepey looking, but I think it's cool. There's such an extreme contrast between the veining and everything else in there. I just love looking at that one. There's another Florida beauty tucked in there as well. There's the Royal Cosmos Lantana, which I like, doesn't want to focus. Is that focus? Kind of? Not really. Has a pretty magenta-y flower on it that start off with the yellow. I mean, it's a lantana. It's a yellow lantana that goes off into an orange color and then turns it all pink. It's pretty. Then another really here is the different variety called Raging Cajun. Looking nice. Hummingbirds have been liking that one. The variegated basket grass is trailing all down the edge of the pot and just looking splendid. I love this plant. I absolutely love them. I had a video that I was going to put out about them and then I I don't know. I need to rework it because there's some things that have to be talked about in regards to the family that this is in, which types are invasive and which types aren't and so forth. I just like it because of that long wispy nature it has. It naturalizes an area so effortlessly. You can see how it comes down across those rocks, the spacing there in between each leaf. Something about it just makes me happy. Moves in the wind, has some color to it. It just looks cool. It's a nice looking plant, makes me happy. And I think that that is it. Oh, the Pseudoranthemum. Really cool plant, nice glossy foliage. I think last time I talked about this plant, I was talking about how it had flopped and gotten somewhat droopy because the drip, all the irrigation actually got turned off. But it is rebounded, it's probably grown a foot since then. Nice big tall plant. I think I want to dig this one out of this pot and put it in a smaller container to take it inside for the winter and just see how it does. I think it'd be worth trying because it's grown fairly effortlessly so far and it just looks cool. So shiny and pretty. Beautiful plant. Um, people have asked about the mule palms. There they are. One there, one over there. They're back there. I'll move them back over onto the patio when there's more room and the tropicals are gone. Those will be out here like, I don't know, probably maybe until February. It just depends on the kind of cold we have. Never know how bad the winters are going to be here. There we go. Long tour, covered almost everything. I guess there's some orchids and some other plants I could talk about, but been here for a long time. I'm happy with how things have been going out here. Plants are looking good, nice and healthy. Nothing bad to report with anything. Don't think I've lost anything. They all seem good. Yeah, I hope you're good too. Comment down below, say hi. I love talking to everybody. What's been going on in your gardens? Y'all staying busy, staying cool, doing some fall planting yet? Still have a few weeks here till I'm gonna get on the fall planting. That is with shrubs and those things. Still a little bit warm and there's other things I do with the annuals and tropicals first. Ah, I hear thunder. That's good. Need some rain. Afternoon showers are moving in. So hope everybody's doing well, having a great day and a great life. Everything's just going beautifully for you. And of course, as always, and most importantly, everybody keep on growing. Bye bye.